no one home. Right? Keep you here all day. Right. So, so my name is Frank Hall. And this is our topic for today. Start at early, stay safe, grow the rule, cyber education. Okay, so for those of you who know me, which are a lot of people in the room who do, they usually know me as being a beach for guy because I gotta work with kids and a lot of other things. So you know I try not to get down. I'm always oh, over energized, kinda like I am now. But for today's topic, we're gonna talk about some other things that we're gonna talk about on the zombie break or someone comes up to me and goes, hey, Mr. Hall, have you heard of this? And then we have to like stop or anything, I'm doing anything to talk about that. But we'll dive by that, into that in a minute. You ready? Now? Here goes. <laughs> Hit it. Do it again. It didn't work. <laughs> You're a Kind of like breaks me with the kids and get a little bit of something to gear toward, and I get to be a little bit silly. Right? So go ahead and hit the next button for me. I'm hitting buttons. You're not hitting the buttons, you hit the arrows. The arrows didn't work. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. Always the coach, right? So here's a little bit about me. I work for the United States Air Force. I'm retired Army. I'm a Cyber Patriot coach for two teams. I've been for many teams out here in San Antonio, San Angelo, Texas. I've also been working around the country. I've helped save up teams in parts of the country and in Canada. That's just fun stuff, right? And I also have my sidekick, Harold the Bluetooth. But the important thing is, I'm not Andrew Zimmer. I'm not him. I have been asked for autographs. At Walmart, they have stopped me. Hey, we're going to go get in there so I can see what you're eating. But no, not me. They don't want to believe me. Is this not an autograph? Sure, yes. But some other people think I'm, I'm not him. Are you Mr. Clean then? No, I'm not Mr. Clean. <laughs> nor am I Steve Bilko. Nor am I Tom Rocky Jr. Or, or any other bald guy. <laughs> Where'd you put her on? Right. Go ahead. Okay, so the reason for today's talk. So as I was submitting things to talk about, I had five topics to talk about in the air. And I put it out on a poll, rattled it down a few more. And the one that won was early internet safety for elementary and middle school kids. And that was my wife's idea. I should throw it out there and see what happens. So I did. So all this is because of my wife. Because she knows I work with kids a lot, all ages. So she's like, you. Is there anything out there like this? And sadly, the teachers I've spoken to, the kids that have come up to me and said certain things, and I asked, well, didn't they teach you this in your cybersecurity class? Or, hey, did they have a cyber class at your school, no matter what grade, did they talk about this stuff? And nobody talks about proper internet safety. So that's what we're here to talk about today. I'm trying to help teach. Are there any teachers in the room? Former. Former teacher? I kind of hear from <laughs> Parents? Yeah. Okay. Just not everybody's arm up. So, this is geared to help you, and if you know a teacher, to help better prepare them in the event that they notice one of their students or their child is being enticed by them. Get it? Okay. So, why is it important to discuss this? in elementary and middle school. Before she hits the button, what are some reasons that you, you think is important for uh, elementary school? And we're talking kindergarten up to fifth grade. Why is it important? Roblox isn't safe. <laughs> Roblox isn't safe, no? They are already in the computers. Already? You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're more vulnerable, so it's easy to like when you click onto something. Correct. Hit the button button, measure. These are some of the top reasons why. They're fearless. Kids will install anything. Those of you who have given your gadgets to your kids know this. They go in, hey, what's this do? And then you get your device back, like, what the heck is on here? Why is it on here? What did you do? Right? 
they're more willing to give up personal information that they're not supposed to be giving up, which is a big red flag. So if you haven't talked to your child about this before, remember Stranger Day Return to the 80s? My mom and dad in this room? Okay, same type of thing. Okay, you don't know who you're talking to on the internet and they overly share this information. Okay, if it's something everybody needs to talk to, children, they're not so technical savvy friends, all of that when we're on the internet. It's bottom one. Oh, wait, I got a window. Which one was it? The red button. The red one? Mm -hmm. It's not working. That one. <laughs> right there. Kids are on social media platforms whether you know it or not. They could be using the tablets at school, you don't know about it, if they don't have a smart device at home or access to a computer. They could be using their friend's device and you don't know about it. So when you were a kid, did you always do everything your parents told you to do? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Half the stuff I probably should have been arrested for when I, when I was a kid, right? But they're still doing some of the same things now as we did back then. They don't necessarily listen to your parents because they don't, you know, it's not much what's going on. Nothing's going to happen to me. So social media platforms is the big reason. Next. So here's where we're going to start diving into some analysis. People in governments have done some in-depth studies on these things while I was searching, gathering background information on this. Okay, it's personal, please. We did it again. Well, it's automated. I forgot which ones I had to automatically pop up. So this is from the, this year's IC3 crime report from the FBI. And they're targeting specifically crimes against children. And as you can see, based on the numbers over the past three years, they're basically the same. Only about 300 cases, reported cases, over the past year of what the difference is. So, 20, whether it's 2,500 cases, 2,100 cases, that's over 2,000, it's too many. And keep in mind, these are the ones that are reported, these aren't the ones that don't go unreported. Okay? There's more. I'm sure there are. Can't predict because there's well, what the numbers that we have. But, they don't get into specifics about what these crimes are, but most of us adults know who follow this stuff, understand what the crimes are, what's being brought against them, brought against, you know, reported to the FBI. It's not a good thing. And online enticement is usually the number one thing that gets harm brought to these children. So you'll notice at the top of each slide I have where I got it from has the website so you can look it up. So you can read the whole report yourself. It's going to be for all the stuff I have up here. Next. Do it again. Okay, so this one comes from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. We're going to start with the top right number that says 90%. So over the past three years, of all the children that were abducted, number one cause being online enticement. The good news is 98% of them were recovered. That's a staggering number to have now, 98%. It's 30, 40 years ago, if a kid got kidnapped, probably never saw him again. Or it would be many years before he saw him again. So 98% for our law enforcement professionals that do this is a fantastic number. It might be 2% off, cases happen, children get killed, they don't find the bodies, or kept in cellars, Stuff like this happens, they can't ever find the 2%. But for 98%, that is fantastic. Any law enforcement in here? I work with law enforcement every once in a while, sort of. You guys, they do a fantastic job. No matter what level, local or federal, if they do this for a living, you have my admiration. Because this is hard stuff to do with day in day out. When, ah, oh, there we go. So this number right there, Look at that age right there, 15 and younger. Victims of online enticement. Yeah, you're right in there. 
15 years and younger. Because they're on social media. Not, not that social media is bad, but they're on there who are exposing themselves. Their information is out there. Right? And if you can see it right there, online enticement cases have also higher proportion of children who are 13 years or younger. So that's right in that middle school age range. Whether they're starting to go online or starting to see what's out there. Start to play video games more. Right. All this is starting to So if we go up here, what's that say right there? Those children were known to be speaking to adults online before they went missing. So they've already had active conversations. The perpetrator was already talking to the child, building a rapport with them. So they know, hey, you know, you can talk to me. So they're ignoring the victim into grooming them. Right. So here's the part where everybody wants to talk about social media. So social media sites, gaming, handyman. Now, I don't know how that fits to you, but you must have done to work done to the housework there, which I can't see happening. But the other two, the online gaming and social media, definitely right in there. Because what can you do in games that you can do on social media? You can talk to people. You can talk to people. Inline chat, online chat, inline video conferencing. Voice, voice chat. Right, that's all available on all the platforms. Most parents don't know this. Most teachers don't know this. Until they have somebody like me come in and talk to them and say, hey, tell me what you want me to talk about here, what the baseline is. Are your kids playing this type of game? Have they talked to you about it? Make sure that, you know, hey, if you're playing the game, you talk to them about it. Watch out for inline. You want in game checks as Okay. So, those right there, right? Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, and TikTok. The five most used apps according to this report right here. Because kids are just posting stuff out there, they get the message back or a friend request back, they don't really research who's behind the persona, and that's how it starts. So, this one comes from an organization called Thorn. There's the website right there. Now, they have a bigger list of games and social media sites. And they have percentages at the age. See the age up here? Mm -hmm. uh, the percentage of the kids using these apps playing these games. Now, the one that I found out about a couple years ago, the one that scared me the most, is Omegle. Who has heard of a maple before? Okay. So, I found out about it by watching Uncle Roger. Who knows Uncle Roger? Hi, yeah, for you. Uncle Roger. If you make bad egg fried rice, that's your guy. He will call you out to hurt me. Okay? So, Uncle Roger, I was watching this video, and he said, talking about a maple, I said, well, what the heck is this? I Played the video. And what a maple is, you blindly video call people and somebody answers on the other end. Don't know who it is, don't know what their intentions are. So, over well, the course of the video, Uncle Roger just happened to be talking to some middle aged little girls about what they're doing on a maple, what time it is there, where they're located, because they told them where they were at, what time it was, told them their ages, told them their names, what we're sharing, remember? That's exactly what they did. And they were like, well, you know, what's some of the weirdest things you saw? People exposing body parts. People asking for certain things. Hey, here's my email address. Can you do this? That's why that one scares me the most. Okay? Because you're actively looking for somebody to talk to. And someone will actively try to answer that call. So if you see anybody with that, talk to them about it. Next, please. Don't hit next to you. Okay. <laughs> so, this one comes from the Office of Communications in the UK. Found this report. Fantastic report. For all of you who like numbers, statistics, 
kids are doing, online game breakdown percentages, who's doing what. This is the report to look at. But keep in mind, it's only for you. They cover everything. They have statistics for everything. Just like this. Everything. How much do you spend more time? What game are you playing? What do your parents think about this? Everything is broken down. It's a very detailed report. I could not find one equivalent to it here that the U.S. government produces. I call them what is the FBI, I call them what is the NSA, what is the Secret Service. Nobody had a report for this. Just that. So if you go to this report, sit back and read it. You'll learn patterns, you'll see patterns, you'll say, oh yeah, okay, my niece or my nephew's doing this, my son or daughter's doing this. But what I want you to pull away from this is so this is geared toward teachers and parents. Who do they talk to first about internet safety? So this is from two years, right? 21, 20, 22, 23. Number one, parents. Parents are always the number one set of, set of people or person that a child talks to. They see something that makes them uncomfortable or why. Which is a good thing. You feel comfortable, they feel comfortable love coming to talk to you. About this, they know you're not going to get in trouble. Fantastic. I mean, it, it dropped from here, there, about three percent. But teachers are always number two. I went back a couple of years to see if these, how drastically these numbers changed. I've been like three, four years. Parents and teachers are always first and second. Parents first, teachers second, which emphasizes my point that. Teachers need to understand what's going on and the signs that might be happening with online placement for students. And that's why I wrote this. Teachers are a second line of defense for these kids. <clears throat> Bit next. All right, so now we're coming out of the dark stuff. I don't like diving too dark into it, right? The younger people in here don't want to get too messy with it. Or nine day olds is fine. Don't understand what's going on, what's going on yet. But here's the light coming out of the tunnel. Right? There are resources out there to be used to teach. And the important thing is they're free. Schools are on budget, school have budgets, they have to stick to certain things, all free. And the main majority of them are coming from a virtual organization or a federal government. Hit the button, please. I like having a button measure. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I don't gotta worry about batteries. Hit the button. So, number one question I get asked is, well, when can we talk about this? Or how do I start to talk about this? My first response is October. This is the perfect time to talk about this, because what is October? We're in this month. Right? How do we do this? If you as a teacher or a parent don't feel comfortable, offer a teacher, hey, let's bring in a guest speaker. Number one choice, if somebody already works in the district, use your IT director. Because they got to see this stuff on a daily basis anyway, this would be internet traffic. What's going on? They can get to see what's going on, how the kids react, where they're going on in the school network. A parent who works in cybersecurity, number two choice, right? FBI, NSA, even the Air Force where I work have outreach programs. They will send people there to a school or an organization to talk to kids about this stuff and to help teachers. And finally, you can call me. I do this stuff all the time. I always go to schools. I'm always teaching somewhere. I'm always public speaking like this somewhere. Not necessarily on this topic, but I can't do this now. Okay, here we go. Here's the good stuff. Stuff that teachers can use in the classroom, and it's free. I think one of them we have to sign up for an account, but we'll get in that in a minute. And the button, please. So the first one comes from National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. It's what? Net smarts. So, a couple years ago, Cyber Texas, 
but he would be the lead teacher right after the tragedy happened to lead a camp. Jonathan was there. He was fantastic. He led the Porsche back. I had no idea how to lead. But what was going on was, but that, that, eventually there were some online shenanigans going on for the families and the kids that were out there at the time. So when I went out there and I started looking for stuff, okay, what do I got to take with me out there to kind of teach these kids what to go out for? This was the first set I went to. They have games, they have videos, they have handouts. They have a whole array of things from kindergarten, K through eight. They even have high school stuff. Okay, but you gotta gear toward your target audience here. They have a wonderful array of things that will help kids learn and help teachers learn. It's free. You just have to sign up for it. They gotta go through a bit of a vetting process, but once you're in, you have access to everything. PowerPoints like presentations. If you want to give a Assembly, they have presentations on that too. Fantastic. Go ahead, next one, please. Uh, you heard of cyber.org? Beside me. Okay. So, cyber.org is a fantastic cyber, cyber education platform. So, if you want to learn cybersecurity or teach cybersecurity in your school when you need something to get you started, this is the place to do it. But for today's talk, you want to search for digital citizenship. That's one of them, cybersecurity basics. They have digital citizenship there. And it's like a 60 hour course. Teachers can stretch this out, or they can nitpick what they want to talk to the kids about to help keep them safe online. It's a fantastic platform, nationally recognized. It's well laid out when they're doing these things. Kids will love it. Teachers will love it too. Next. Now, who would have thought the Federal Trade Commission would have had stuff for child safety? But they do. They have a lot of senior citizen adult protection material out there to keep you safe online, but they also have stuff for kids. So, the thing I have up here now is kind of like a handout of what they had you can download it, put it up, the teacher could put it up on the wall informational type thing. And that's something that they have in many topics. Cyberbullying, all those things are out there. And again, it's free. Go ahead. The FBI. Love them or hate them. They have a fantastic program for these kids to learn. And I just found out, and if I can get a bunch of middle school kids together, we will be doing this competition because they have a monthly competition during the school year, right? And if you score high enough, they will put your name on the repeater board, and if you're at the top, at the top, like if you win that month, they will send an FBI representative out to your school to talk about cybersecurity. So like I said, we can get middle schoolers winning. We're gonna win this thing. Because there's nobody here in Texas we can be the first, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, in case you didn't know, Dr. Joyner, who spoke earlier, raise your hand. She is my technical mentor for one of my, uh, my cyber media teams. So I get to bounce stuff off of her all the time because she's smarter than I am and she has cool issues. Right? But they break this down from third to eighth grade. It's a level of understanding, it's age appropriate. I haven't gone into it because I have to create an account, so I can't tell you if it's good or bad. But if it's informational and the kids learn, it's good in my opinion. Good. Now, these next two slides go together because if you're in San Antonio, you know about CIAS and you'll know about the next slide. And if you know me or if you know who CIAS is, you know they pickle me all the time because I cannot play their games at all as a mental block. I don't know how to do it. I can build and take the infrastructure but I can't play this game. But teachers, parents tell your teachers, you can go out fill out a form on their website and you can get a classroom deck for free. So it's what, 25, 24 cards, card decks? Right, it's good. 
So like Cyber Threat Defender and those, those two right there, you need two people to play, right? The other one, I think it's kind of like you do, it's elementary school, you can have a roundabout type thing, you can all work together. But for a learning tool, something that's free and it's a card game and it's not hooked into a computer and you just sit there and play back and forth, it's exactly what you need. It teaches them about what an ISB is. It teaches them about certain cyber attacks. It teaches you defense against the cyber attacks. So it doesn't get into the online stuff, but if they understand how the attack works or what an attacker is trying to do, they start to pick up those habits. Hey, I can look for this. Who's this guy that keeps trying to ping me? Where's he coming in? Fantastic resource. If your teacher can get a box of these, and they show about national. So if you know people in other states, tell them to go to that website and they can get a free deck. Right? That's it already? Yes, and then you're in a different language as well. Oh, yeah, it's Spanish, right? Yeah, so they have it in Spanish as well. Now, next. I can't do any presentation without talking about, of course, Cyber Major. Now, we're not here to talk about the competition or the fun things that we do during the competition. We're here to talk about their elementary school program. I used this at the Valley as well. The fun one was this one. Kids love that one the most. Actually defending the network. But they have the book. They have two books here for elementary school kids. They have materials that are out there to help you learn, or help the kids to learn who you can talk to, who you can get information to. That's what that does. That one is how do you make a proper password? How do you protect your operating system? But that one right there is the more important one for the younger kids. Hi, I'm a cop. Should you give me your personal information? Oh, hey, I'm this guy that lives down the road. You don't know me that much. I want to know your name. Should you give me the name? That's what they're trying to learn. That's what we're trying to instill in each other kids. Who you can talk to, who you can't talk to. What information you can and cannot give to someone you don't know. Right? And again, it's free. All these things are free. That you have to fill out a Google form. They will immediately send you a link and you can download everything. And it's ready for you to use. Any questions at all? So I'm trying to keep it on time. Um, all right, you're out 10 minutes left. Right. What was the, the resource that you all said that you had in Spanish as well? Oh, go back one. That one. So all these, uh, that one's printed in Spanish as well. Which one? The Sorry, Cyber Threat Defender. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Which one? Okay. That one? All of the CIS. Are they all done? I think so. Okay. So according to the boss, Diana here, <laughs> they're all in Spanish. They're working, if it's not, they're working. Or they're working on it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they've got all this. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention the Cybers. Good thing you went back. <laughs> this is strictly for elementary school kids. They got handouts. They got other things you can learn or use with your students or your children who are in the group age to help them learn these things. All right, back. Forward in time. And I think, last one. Like I said, the purpose of this wasn't to instill fear or amplify fear of what's out there online where your kids could be getting into without you knowing. Or the students could be getting into. But try to help give teachers resources they can use to educate the students. Same thing with the parents, something you can work with with your children to make sure they understand what dangers are out there. I think that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. I hear a copy of these sent to me, or they're available online, so I can send it to like, my sister. Are these Where things going to be uh, put online anywhere? The whole thing's recorded. Okay, so the whole thing's recorded. If you come down and grab one of my cards, I can email it to you. Sweet, okay. Thank okay. You. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. At what age would you recommend to start? The youngest age to start? So the youngest age I had when everything that I was looking at was second grade. 
So it was six, seven years old. Start teaching them about things. Yes. Be secure. Yes. Especially if you hand them your phone a lot. <laughs> yes. So if you have that habit, start talking to them before you hand them the phone. Anything else, sir? Maybe you can have the answer to uh, it. Ninety percent. Do you know how about that number up so high? For the uh, children being located. So the recovery rate. They didn't get into it as to number of cases, what the cases were. They were saying that over the three-year period, the recovery of the abducted children was at 98 percent. Like I said, there might be another report or another report that they publish that goes deeper in depth than that. I couldn't find one, but this is the exact, the one that was up there was the executive summary for their thing, and that was like the second second page should read it and everything on top before they delve deep into the report. Anything else? All right, well, thank you very much.